Hello everyone, Harry here. Welcome back, thanks for joining me. Today I want to talk about program drums, MIDI instruments and how we can use them to the best of their ability so we can all play along with the illusion that perhaps they're not programmed instruments. I would say most people who watch this channel are probably hobbyists, bedroom producers, people who do it for, for fun and I think 99.9% .9 of us will be using software instruments, program drums, programmed keys, programmed wind instruments. And the biggest thing you want to do when you're using any of these things is try and convince everybody that they're perhaps not programmed or MIDI instruments. That's the biggest compliment you can get on something that's been done completely in the box, is that somebody isn't quite sure whether it was actually done completely in the box. So I'm going to quickly run through how I use them, how I take them out of the box that they're in, just to normal audio tracks, so that when I come to mixing the track that I've used them in, I can treat them just like they're live instruments and we can process them in a way that sounds a little bit more natural. So the main MIDI stuff that I use in any of my projects is drums. Like I've said in a lot of my other videos, I haven't got the space all the time, all the microphones, all the interface, all the money to get any of those things to do live drums in any of my tracks. And more importantly, unless you've got a really well treated room, a really nice set of mics, a really nice interface and some to be honest, some decent outboard gear as well. The chances of you being able to get some really, really crisp and nice sounding live drums without having to just chuck samples at them anyway is pretty much next to nothing. The way I see it, if I'm gonna record a live kit and then just sit and throw samples at it until it doesn't sound live anymore, what was the point of doing any of that? I am a drummer, I've, I've been a drummer for years, so programming drums comes quite naturally to me. It's quite easy, I just kind of put in what I would play. So in here I've just got some drums which are for uh, a project that I'm working on at the moment. I'm getting to the point with that demo where I'm going to start taking it into the more finalised version so I'm going to do the drums properly, change strings, re-record all the guitar parts and re-record the vocals and actually put some effort in that kind of stuff. So the first step for me is always to bounce the drums out and to get them sounding alright. I'm going to go through the quick process of how I bounce the drums out. So I use Get Good Drums Modern and Massive. I think it's such a good starting place. Um, you can make them fit in pretty much any genre of music with a few little kit changes. There's nothing I'm actually going to change to this. I'm going to leave it completely alone and I will explain why as we go through. So I'm in Reaper. Obviously, if you're using a different DAW, this will change a little bit, but you can do this in every DAW. I just don't know what the specific key commands or buttons are. So all together, we've got the drums. So they actually sound pretty good. The get good drum stuff is really good in the box. But what we've got at the moment is a situation where we're mixing these drums in the box when we're already in a box. So what I like to do is take them out of one box to put them just in the other box. I think it just makes everything a lot easier. And if you're on a slightly older system or anything like that, taking the MIDI items out and then getting rid of that element of your mix will actually hugely reduce your, your CPU load and your RAM usage and it'll make the, the mixing process a lot easier for you. So nice and straightforward really, what we're going to do is, I'm going to go in here, what we're looking to achieve is a kick, a kick sub, a snare top, a snare bottom, rack tom, floor tom, floor tom, overheads, overheads and then a room mic. That's what I'm after and probably a hi-hat mic as well. With this it's really easy, all we're going to do is we're going to go in, I want a kick, I'm going to solo the kick and they're going to come out of there. I'm going to go on render freeze tracks and I'm going to render tracks to a mono stem track. Now the stereo or mono tracks, that's up to you. Obviously kick, snare, toms, they don't really need to be a stereo item. The only thing that I'd probably do as a stereo item would be the room mics because you just kind of want in one and you want it to have left and right elements. And that is literally as simple as it is. And there's my kick. Then we can go back in. I need a kick sub. And just repeat as required. So let me blast through this, bounce all of these out, and then I can show you what we end up with.
Right, so there you go. I've rendered them all out of Get Good Drums. Um, they're now just audio files, just pure audio files. And what you basically end up with is just a really nicely recorded drum kit. There's a little bit of bleed on all of them. We can now treat this as a normal drum set and we can go through the normal process of mixing as you would with live drums. We can just get rid of that entire track. Now that might be a little bit brave because I'd have to program this all again if, if it didn't turn out right. But I knew before I bounced those out just then that that was the finalised drum track and I was happy with it. So I don't need it anymore. And by bouncing them out into audio files, I've taken away another distraction of a process further down the line where you think, uh, I could put a high tom in there rather than a floor tom. It doesn't make any difference. Just work with what you've got. That's what you'd have to do if you're using live drums. And that's what I'm suggesting you do here because it just takes another variable out of the process. So I've used drums for this example, but I do exactly the same thing with keys, I do exactly the same thing with bass, with, with anything else that I put in that is MIDI orientated. When I come to mix a song, all I want is audio files. I don't want to have to start messing around with MIDI and stuff. It makes things messy, it takes loads of uh, CPU up when you're just trying to get on with other things. And as I said before about the drum track, it's if you've got an audio file and that's what you've got, you have to make the best of what you've got. The, when you've got huge MIDI controllers and synths and stuff, that there's, there's a massive temptation to go in and make micro adjustments that in the end of the day really don't matter to how the song's gonna sound, but you can find yourself tied up in it for hours. So yeah, thank you very much. I hope this helps a couple of you. It's certainly helped me. It's only in the last 12 months that I've actually started doing this. I used to just leave it in the box, in the box, and just use a preset and crack on with it, but I think the more time you put into stuff, you don't have to make this hugely complicated because of how good the drums come and how level and equal they are and how much controllability you've had putting the drums into the MIDI controller. Your mixing them actually is, is really quite easy. It's just a little bit of compression, a tiny bit of EQ, and then just a little bit of levels, and you don't really have to mess around with too much else. So thanks for joining me. Um, I'm gonna say the same as I say at the end of every video. I hope you're all good. I hope you're all keeping well. Music is safe, music keeps you good. Keep up with it. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.